In this video, you're going to learn how to implement quicksort and what are the situations best suited for it. Quicksort is sometimes quite confusing, but in this video, I'm about to give you the exact same steps I use whenever I have to sort an array. So if you have problems understanding how this algorithm works, this video is for you. Now, you might remember in the last video, I introduced you to the shirt problem. Let's say a client wants to know information about how many and what types of shirts have been sold over a weekend sale. Well, now it's a good time to use a sorting algorithm. For that example, the client only had about 20 types of shirts for sale, and so we implemented the insertion sort algorithm. Let's say the client has grown since then and just had a sale with 50 brands of shirts, and now he's in a rush to find out how many of those shirts he has sold so he can stock up for a new promotion. Because insertion sort isn't generally a good idea on an array bigger than 25, this would be a good time to use the quicksort algorithm. Quicksort is said to be the quickest sorting algorithm with a time complexity of big O notation of n logarithm of n best case. Quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm, and what I mean by divide and conquer is that the algorithm breaks the problem into smaller pieces, solves those first, and then puts everything back together. Think of it like Napoleon. It's fast, it divides and conquers, but it's tedious and seems to be working out some anger issues. Let's get into the example and you will see what I mean. When you first start sorting elements inside of an array using the quick sort algorithm, you will first need to choose a pivot. And the pivot will be your starting point of the divide and conquer strategy. So let's take a look at this following array. So this is what our array looks like. And these elements are just the number of t-shirts sold during that weekend sale. So now let's try to sort this array using the quick sort algorithm. Now, if you remember, I told you that we first need to choose a pivot. And for the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna choose as our pivot element 12. So let me just write this pivot as 12. So this will be our starting point into our divide and conquer strategy. The rule for the quicksort algorithm says that all the elements on the left of the pivot have to be smaller than the pivot and all the elements on the right of the pivot have to be bigger than the pivot. So what we're going to do is to choose two variables, variable i and variable j. And variable i will iterate from the left of the array starting from 18, and variable j will start iterating from the right of the array. And you will see why in a second. So let's set i as 18 and j as 9. Let me do that with a different color. So we have i here and j here. The reason why we're actually iterating i from the left of the array is because we're trying to find elements that are bigger than our pivot that we need to move on the right of the array. And the reason why we're choosing to iterate j from the right of the array is because we're trying to look for elements that are smaller than our pivot that we're going to need to move on the left of the array. All right, so let's write it down. i is gonna be 18 and j is going to be 9. i is bigger than our pivot and j is smaller than our pivot. So if this rule applies, then we swap the elements together. The array is gonna be like this. 12, 9, 1, and 18. Alright, we still have 12 as our pivot. Now we iterate i as the following element. This is going to be i and this is going to be j. i is going to be 7 and j is 1. i is not bigger than 12. So what we're going to do, we're going to move a step forward. We change the i 
to 13. So our i is going to be 13 and j is going to still be 1. Now the rule applies. i is bigger than our pivot and j is smaller than our pivot. So we're actually going to rewrite and swap these elements together. So our array will look like this. 12, 9, 7, 1, 16, 6, 13, and 18. All right, now we have this array. Now our i is moving down to 16 and j is moving to 6. i is bigger than our pivot and j is smaller than our pivot. And what we do, we swap them. What we're going to have here is 6 and here 16. So this is the first step. Let me clean the blackboard and we will take it from this step. All right, so we are at this step right now. The next logical step would be to increment i here and j here. So let's do it like this, j and i. But since j is smaller than our pivot and i is bigger than our pivot, we have found the position of our pivot in the sorted array. And what I mean by this is that we're gonna swap six with 12 in the array. So our array will look like this. Six, nine, seven, one, 12, 16, 13, and 18. All right, now we know that 12 has been sorted. And if you remember, the divide and conquer strategy says that we split up the problem into smaller pieces and then we solve those little pieces and put it back together. Now, since we know where 12 is supposed to be into our array, this part of the array is unsorted and this is also unsorted. So what we're going to do right now is take this part of the array, sort that the same way as we sorted the big array. So our array will look like this. six. 9, 7, 1, we choose 6 as our pivot, i would be equal to 9, and j would be equal to 1. So this is our i, this is our j. i is bigger than our pivot and j is smaller than our pivot. So what we're going to do is we're going to swap them. So our array will look like this, 6, 1, 7, 9. All right, so this is what our array looks like right now. So we have one last step. We have j as 1 and i as 7. So what this tells us is that we found the position of our pivot in the array. So our last array is going to look like this, 1, 6, 7, Nine. Now we sorted this part of the array as well. Now we only have these last three elements. If we take 16, 13, and 18, it's going to be like this. 16 are pivot, i as 13, and j as 18. So since i is smaller than 16 and j is bigger than 16, we increment it again. So our i is going to be here and j is going to be here. And what this tells us is that we're going to move 16 instead of 13. So our array will look like this, 13, 16, 18. Now that we have all the bits and pieces put together after sorting all of these elements, our last array, our final array will look like this. One, six, seven, nine. All right, so this is what our array looks like sorted with a quick sort algorithm. I hope you can see that even though the quick sort algorithm is quite fast at organizing, it becomes quite tedious and repetitive. 
This was it for today. I really hope you understand more of how the quick sort algorithm works. So please let me know down in the comments which one of these algorithms, insertion sort, merge sort, or selection sort, you would like to see turn into code for the next tutorial. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.